Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we have the GTEC A20M. It's their, I guess you can call it a pro version of the A10M. A hair bigger with a solid metal base like the CRX and TiVo Flash. So we shall get into it. Stay tuned. Alrighty, here are the contents of the box. People always ask, why do you show the contents of the box when they're the same thing every time? Because probably about 40% of my viewers for every video are people who have never seen one of my videos before. It's a first time user who's interested in this printer, so I have to show at least the basics. We glanced through it quickly, but I gotta show it. So you got your GTEC mouse pad, your Chinese, I guess, bar, the receipt or packing slip, it's all in Chinese. Your quick start guide, which should be pretty simple. Oh, it is a full size SD card slot on the side. You are two very beefy, what I hope are fully constrained, really nice um, extruder stepper motors with your feeder assembly on top. It looks like GTEC's version of a Titan Arrow, or whatever they call that, the one that's on the, the TiVos. It looks like their iteration of it, very, very, very well made. Custom molds, this thing, uh, it's so beefy that at first I thought this was metal. I mean, that, that's how beefy this is. These things are made nice. Um, U.S. power cord. This is your um, gantry, and it is absolutely straight. No bend in this rod this time at all. Very, very straight. I'm very pleased with that because my last one had a little bit of a bend in it. Then you have your goodie bag, which we'll go through in a second. Here is your base. Supposedly, this is 255 cubes, so 255, 255, 255. I do have to tighten this bed. You have a 2040 rail going this way, a metal box screen, SD card knob, and then inside here, see your IEC connections on the side left here. This is your brain board that contains all the, that's the software control stepper drivers for the printer. Your ribbon running to your LCD screen and your 24 volt, 20 amp power supply. Do not forget on the back here, flip that switch so that you can switch this between 115 and 233. It's all the same stuff, you know, 115 for US. And if you get 220, 240 volt power, switch to 223 or whatever it says. Um, nice wire management, nice sheathing. Everything is crimped, everything looks proper. It looks like they went back to standard plugs for the stepper, so you could use regular TL smoothers on this if it needs it. But I also have these new, from TH3D Studios, these new board-based stepper um, TL smoothers, eight diode TL smoothers. You take your stepper drivers out, plug these in, plug your stepper drivers back in. Very nifty little gizmo. Uh, let's see, anything else? That's it, let's go through the goodie bag. Big goodie bag. It's got a lot of stuff in here. Alrighty, there is your spools. So you got two spool assemblies because you're going to have two colors with this. You got two extra PTFE tubes. So you have your PTFE tubes here. Zip ties. Your one gigabyte generic unmarked SD card. Your wrench and tool kit. Extra nozzle is in there as well. Uh, two filament runout sensors. This is your Z rod retention, which I'm going to leave off. I don't see any need for it. You can add it if you want. This is the unconstrained retention, like Creality uses. So if you install this, as long as you do it right, install it loose so it can move around. Move your Z rod all the way, move your Z axis all the way to the top, then gently tighten them down snug. This has, um, the bearing is loose inside of here. So it captures the Z-Rod without restraining it. So it does allow it to wiggle a little bit. I'm just gonna leave it off, but you should be okay installing that as long as you do it right. Your ubiquitous USB cable, it is standard um, A or B USB cable, A to B. Crummy samples, but they are reasonably generous samples and you do get two. So you can do a two color print right away out of the box without having any filament. But we're not gonna use them today because I have 400 rolls of filament, so we're just gonna pick those. Um, this is, I'm guessing this is for the tower base and wherever else of screws I need. I don't know what these are for. I'm not sure what these are for. Extra screws. I guess the instructions will tell me. Oh, this is the backup screw kit. Okay, so these are going to be the four to hold the printer together. It's odd to use those kind. I'd rather use these and I'm going to use these. And then it gives you a couple of extra screws for other things. I'm guessing the spool kit has the hammer nuts inside. Yes, the hammer nuts for your spools are inside. So stay tuned. I am going to 
open up the box and take a look at that board. So I'll make sure to include that in the video here. And then we're going to begin assembly. You guys go. This is the board inside. It's covered up by this little unit here, a 50 by 20 fan, I would guess, or a 40 by 20. It has a sixth stepper driver connection. So second Z or third extruder, maybe? Are they considering a three color printer? These do have removable drivers. These do have standard connections for standard TL smoothers in here, which with all of this empty space, I would use standard TL smoothers for here, and then the plug-in TL smoothers for the um, extruders, since it uses a more proprietary connection, not a standard connection that you would be able to use your regular TL smoothers on. It is a 25 GT2560 board. I'm wondering what the button is. Ah! <laughs> it's got a button there, capacitor, capacitor, speaker, piezo speaker. That's a weird one. I wonder what that is. But there you go, there is your board inside. Pretty good wire management. I would like to I'd like to have seen these wires. Well, yeah, I guess that's the way you want to go. You want them in the center so that you get good airflow to your heat sinks here for your stepper drivers. And they're on there fine, no problems. All right, let's continue building. Alrighty, I have attached the gantry with two screws on each side through the bottom. The bottom is open, as I showed you before. So the two screws simply go through the cross beam and into the gantry, and you tighten them down. It's in the bag that says spare screws, the four um, nice thick head screws. They go in here. And now we are going to install the stepper motors up here for the extrusion system and the spool holders. Ready? Extruder motors, all the wires are plugged in. I got them all plugged in and I installed the two extruder motors. Remember, motors down, um, feeder assembly up. Your um, Don't forget your filament runout sensors. These so far appear to work very reliably. I have had not had one cut out on me yet, so I will leave them on there. And now we are going to plug in our PTFE tubes and install our spool holders. There we go. Spool holders are installed. You want them angled back so that the spool sits right here and feeds filament directly into the stepper motor for the extrusion system. So you want your steppers as close to the middle as you can. Make sure you leave a gap here because you don't want this gear hitting this and you want to be able to get to this gear to advance and retract filament if you need to. And then you want your spool holders as far apart as you can get them because you need enough space in here to be able to slide a spool of filament in between these two and be able to install that filament on either roll. So spread these out. Yeah, it's my fault. I'm not following directions. I was having weekly problems getting the spools to line up, and they actually specify in the directions how to do it. So right there, it tells you you want your spool holders in the middle. They're actually supposed to be closer together, but it doesn't really matter. But you put your spool holders together in the middle, and then you line your extruders up underneath each spool holder. This way your filament, when it comes off the roll, is feeding directly into your stepper motor, which is what you want. So you can bring these as close as you want together. I'm gonna leave them apart because then it lets me get access to these screws without having to take anything apart. But um, that's it, that's what you want right there. So your filament's gonna come off the back and go in this way. Alrighty, filament is loaded. We are ready for first power up and bed leveling. But first, it's double plastic porn for you guys. And you got a big one, you ready? Here's your LCD screen. Let me make sure you can see that. Let's get that. There you go. And then, you got this one. Here it comes. There you go. That's super sticky. <laughs> Okay, last minute double check, switch is at 115 volts, don't forget to make your switch 115 volts, and I'll be right back after power up. Alrighty, bed leveling is pretty easy, um, do your auto home, disable your steppers, and then what I do, is I simply move everything to the corners, and I look, I physically look, and I adjust the knob until I have a physical air gap between the bed and the nozzle that I like, and I move this over here. Same air gap, same air gap, 
same air gap, come to the center, adjust all four if you need to, if you have a slight bow in the bed. I am pretty good here, so I am not even going to live level, I'm just going to print. <laughs> now let's heat it up and see if we can extrude some plastic. First print is done. I did a couple of color changes. Let me give you some more light here. Can I get some light on the print please? There we go. I don't know why it's coming out so dark. That is a nice clean Marvin. I did a color couple of changes in there. Good cooling, good overhangs, no droopy butt, no Z wobble, nice clean color changes. You got that nice little green mix in there as I switch back and forth. Not bad. That is a very clean Marvin. I am happy with that. Time to make some more prints.